All right, guys, so the Virginia governor race is not the only important thing that we need to watch for that people will be voting on today. People will also be voting on a controversial policy that has been pushed by the progressives and the Democrats, which is defund the police in the city where the defund the police movement was born, Minneapolis, Minnesota. As yes, defund the police is on the ballot. However, if you're CNN and you're the liberal media, it's not defund the police, it's police reform. Even though, in my opinion, it, it seems like effectively what uh, the legislation is doing is that it's defunding uh, the police department and replacing it uh, with a new police department or a department of public safety, whatever you want to call it, where, you know, they're going to have less police officers and more, you know, social workers and mental health workers and stuff like that to take the place of police officers, right? Which is essentially what the progressives have told us that they want, right? So <laughs> I'm not really trying to get in this semantics game with the mainstream liberal media, but I just want you guys to know that this is on the ballot today. And to me, it seems like even the most tame parts of this proposal don't even have majority support again as a lot of people have um sour on the whole defund the police thing as polling by the minneapolis star tribune showed that 49 percent of voters favored replacing the police department with a department of public safety so not even half the voters want to re replace the police department with a uh, department of public safety right they need 51 percent of the vote to actually pass and 55% of voters said the city should not reduce the size of its police force. So again, that means a majority of citizens there do not want to uh, reduce the size of the police department, right? They, they probably want more officers considering how, uh, as of right now, it, it seems like there's either a shortage or that officers just aren't showing up to crime scenes when citizens call 911 like they are supposed to. Now, um, defund the police isn't the only thing that has become unpopular in this country. Um, there's also a poll um, that shows that more registered voters oppose Black Lives Matter for the first time since 2018. And you guys know Black Lives Matter um, really, really, really supports defund the police. Matter of fact, that's a part of their platform, right? Defunding the police is a part of their platform and how their movement got so popular right it's a part of the formula and this group was very 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 popular last year after the death of Amar Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd but now according to civics polling 44 percent of people oppose BLM versus 43 percent favoring BLM right so a lot of people have kind of caught on to what a lot of people like myself and conservatives and people on the right have been saying about this organization the whole time which is that um, it is a Marxist organization that is against the nuclear family, is for radical feminism, and really um, is a, a, a fraud Ponzi scheme, to be quite honest with you. It, it, it just really is, right? As we saw millions, if not billions of dollars pour into Black Lives Matter and or Black Lives Matter related movements. However, there has been literally no return on investment uh, in regards to that money being invested in these communities that have been impacted and destroyed by the BLM movement in regards to the riots and the protests and things of that nature, they haven't seen any of that money back in the communities. And the community leaders of the place that kind of has given BLM its stardom, Minneapolis, are actually speaking out against uh, BLM and how they've raised all this money. However, they have not seen any return on investment. And they are also arguing that this is a part of a bigger plot to essentially destroy the black community in Minneapolis. Take a listen. The Black Lives Matter movement up here for us has been a matter of cosmetizing the corpse to camouflage the curse. See right here, this is a multi-million dollar operation. The figures vary from 35 million to, to 50 million dollars. Who got some of that money? Not a dime can I count that they've given us anything back, nothing. In my estimation, they've caused just as much harm as some would think that they've done good. It was a lot of different organizations out here. They kind of brought, brought, I think, brought themselves in here, tried to make themselves something that they wasn't. A large force of anarchists with them, and, and uh, you know, different, different 
radical type groups. You could tell that the place and the stickers and different things, they was never from here. They came in here. They were sent to come in here to do this. My suggestion is that we are facing one of the worst cases of white supremacy that we've ever seen. What do you mean, Rev? White supremacy is to define your reality and then force you to live up under that definition. Hear me. White supremacy, define your reality and then force you to live up under that definition. The Minneapolis Police Department is rotten to the root. If you listen to Black Lives Matter, they'll make you think that the police is the number one issue in the community. We all believe in abolishing the Minneapolis Police Department. But if you take away the police issue, we still got poverty, we still got death, we still got suicide, and we still got drugs. The ones that are not in the good standards, I think they should be get rid of. But I don't think they need to abolish the whole system. And so as they have the money that back them to try to force us to live up under their definition, it ain't black lies because it's white folk that's funding it. They want this area. They want this whole thing. So little by little, they find ways to get the black folks out and get them out of here, get them out of here, get them out of here. Remember? One, take business out of the area. Let poverty set in. Property values go down, get suppressed. Now they come in and they buy the properties at low prices and then they jack the prices up. The average house over south now is over $300,000. It was right here, it's the empty space. All this empty space that got burnt down. They call sympathy pimps. That's what we call them, sympathy pimps. When they see something happen, oh, okay, now they can see how I can make a dollar. We've had over a hundred and some people killed since George Floyd. Seven to 800 shot. And Black Lives Matter has laryngitis as it pertains to what we're doing to each other. And 88% of those shootings and killings have been things that we've done to each other. You can't necessarily say just because a white police officer shot a black, that now it's time for us to protest. It's time for us to protest anytime this, 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 this violence occurs. Now, before I get into this, guys, I, I want to show you guys a news clip from last year that supports the uh, theory from this pastor that people are moving out of Minneapolis while others are moving in and that this is being done on purpose. Take a look. Civil unrest could be taking a toll on Minneapolis. Some moving companies tell us that they've seen more people moving out of downtown because they feel unsafe. Joe Mason has the story. Another day brings another job of moving a person out of downtown Minneapolis. They just don't feel safe. Over the last few months, Greg Springman with Matt's Moving. They are fleeing to the suburbs. Has helped many put Minneapolis in their rear view mirror. You know, the people I talk to and ask why, they're sick of the safety reasons, they're sick of the unrest, and they just want to get to the suburbs where they feel where they feel it's safer. The pandemic and civil unrest are causing some to leave the city. We are seeing an increase in seller activity in the city, uh, but we're also seeing fairly large gains in buyer activity. David Arbit is the director of research for the Minneapolis area realtors. What we're hearing people saying is for every one person looking to leave Minneapolis, there's two or three looking to get in. He says it's too early to say the long term impact the pandemic and civil unrest will have on the city. It seems people are making an eight to 12 year decision based on what could be a nine to 24, maybe 12 to 24 month disruption because of what's been going on. I don't think I'd want to live downtown Minneapolis anymore or, or anywhere in Minneapolis, to be honest with you. For Greg, more people moving out of the city means more business. Unless something drastically changes with the safety concerns, I can, I can definitely see it continuing. The full impact of the pandemic and civil unrest on the Minneapolis housing market will likely take a year or two. Live in Minneapolis, Joe Mason, 5 Eyewitness News. Yeah, so as you can see there, that was a news clip from September of 2020 uh, after the George Floyd riots and stuff like that, detailing how people are moving out. And again, this kind of supports what that pastor was saying in regards to how he thinks that um, a lot of the funding from Black Lives Matter, um, he's essentially implying that it's coming from white liberals, and it's being done on purpose to essentially 
uh, advance the process of the gentrification of a city like Minneapolis, right? Forcing people to move out, uh, some of whom, a lot of whom are probably black people who had their neighborhoods destroyed, uh, moving out of the city and going to other places and, and businesses moving out as well while others move in and, you know, essentially drive up the property values. Now, again, I haven't seen much evidence of this in, re in regards to real estate prices dropping per se, but that could be because of loose monetary policy coming from the feds uh, with low interest rates propping up uh, property values anyway. So, I mean, again, I, it, it could be a lot of things going on here. But I guess what I'm saying is that I, I do find what he's saying, the, the theory to be interesting because there have been millions, if not billions of dollars pour into the Black Lives Matter movement related causes and none of these communities have seen a return on investment from it, right? I mean, we talk about Minneapolis where the defunded police movement was born. Ferguson, okay, uh, where I, I think, what, the Black Lives Matter movement was born, right? They, activists there, um, the father of Michael Brown has come out and said that, hey, we haven't seen any of the money, right? But what we have seen is that we've seen the leader of Black Lives Matter, the, the global network, Patrice Cullors, she's cashed out, right? She was running the organization, uh, she started buying all these houses, started buying all this stuff, getting these movie deals, doing books, right? While also, again, taking in millions of, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions. And then all of a sudden, when people kind of caught on to what she was doing, she stepped down and then she's living her life basically retired, right? Her, her family, her four houses. And these communities have nothing to show for it. Now they're sitting here like, we got our communities destroyed all for nothing, Right. And, and this is something that, again, I, I, I've been saying a lot um, when it comes to BLM and how I describe it, because the left, they love to talk about white supremacy. But I've said this time and time and again, when it comes to leftist liberal policies and the things they support. To me, if I was a white supremacist, kind of like what that pastor was implying. Yeah, I would want to defund the police. I would support riots and protests in your community. Right. I would keep you defended on the government. I would. Uh, disarm you. I would take away your guns. Okay. Those are things that I would do if I was a so-called white supremacist. I would take the father out of the home. I would tell you, you don't need a man, right? Let women take care of all your kids. That's what I would do. These are things that BLM supports. That's, that's what they support. And I, I just found it fascinating how that pastor kind of explained that because I've made that same uh, analogy before in regards to how People want to talk about white supremacy. I think BLM is probably the biggest white supremacy group in this country if people want to have that conversation about white supremacy, right? Even though, again, I'm not big into the whole, old oh, there's a white supremacist, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying, you want to talk about policies. I, I think BLM, again, is probably the most detrimental movement to black people in this country. And you can see it in the aftermath of the Minneapolis riots, all the riots that happened across the country, in which all these communities, right, all this money that was raised by corporate America, um, none of these communities that actually was suffering saw any of that money whatsoever, right? And now you have BLM having more people oppose the movement and actually support it now in 2021. And they're off the grid, right, outside of protesting uh, vaccine mandates, which that's just Black Lives Matter of Greater New York, which is not even a part of the, the Black Lives Matter Global Network technically. It's almost like police brutality has disappeared now that Biden is in office and that they've raised all this money and the people at the top have been paid off. The ones that are really suffering got hoodwinked were the people whose community suffered in the name of social justice. Even the big multinational corporations made money off of it, right? All of them are pro-Black Lives Matter. Virtue signaling off the backs of actual pain and suffering, right? And again, the people that are actually suffering Saw no return on investment from this stuff. Saw no return on it. It's kind of crazy how that works. But, hey, this is what I've been saying the whole time. I've been saying this for a year. People on the right have been saying this for a year. Conservatives have been saying this for a year. And now all of a sudden it seems that people are finally starting to realize that this whole movement was fraudulent, right? <laughs> the whole movement was fraudulent. But we'll see what happens in Minneapolis in, re in regards to them voting on this police reform bill. Um, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.